Hi, thanks, Phil. Uh, so once again, to introduce myself, I'm Zahid Ilkal, Director of Product Management at Comwall, responsible for a whole bunch of things around media management, virtual server management, and so on and so forth. Been with Comwall for about 14 years now. Uh, started off in the engineering department, wrote a lot of code. Uh, I did a lot of media management, wrote a lot of the foundations for our deduplication solutions. Then I switched over to the dark side, switched over to product management, and then they basically rewrote all the code and reintroduced our duplication solution. So I've uh, been here for, uh, been doing product management for a few years now. Before we get into the whole VM protection specific <coughs> or VM management specific thing, just kind, kind of to reiterate what Phil is saying, what is our data management philosophy? At the very, so for those of you who know us, know us as a backup and recovery company. But what we really like to call ourselves is a modern data protection or modern data management company. And what we mean by that is, the whole notion around what modern data management is this. You basically capture the data, but not all of the data, just the net new or the changed data. At one point, as soon as, as close to creation as possible, once. And then you capture it and then you efficiently uh, move it to the back. And while you're doing that, you also not only collect the data, but you collect as much information about that data set as you can. Metadata, ACL, security descriptors, ownerships, size, and everything else are there, and, and transfer that in the backend as well, as well. So we're not just copying the bits and bytes, we're also copying context of that entire uh, object over there. Of course, we'll move it down to the backend, source ID duplication, store it in a repository in the backend over there, but our goal is not to make that just another copy of data that nobody has access to. The big value and the big big benefit that comes from carrying over that index from the front to the back is now I can expose off the secondary tier of storage, uh, secondary data set over here, which has history, which has memory, which has a whole bunch of other things in the back end there that helps you go in and start making smarter, intelligent decisions about how to run your business or how, about, or how to manage your environment over there. So that's kind of the core philosophy in our side is basically have a very low impact touch point up front, grab it as quickly as you can, store it as efficiently as you can, and expose it in as many ways as you can in native format to all of the end users, all of the data stakeholders over there. Now, clearly backup is one of the things that's critical for us because backup is the one engine that essentially touches all of the critical components in your environment, and it allows us to kind of do that one touch point over there and capture everything. So which is why we started out as a backup company, but, we, but when we built this index, when we built this engine in the, under the covers there, it allows us to expose a whole bunch of other capabilities. Nowhere is that more apparent when we talk about some other capabilities around VM management that we'll go into shortly over here. Right? Now, for those of you who, are, who have a little bit of context to this, there has been some flattering and some unflattering comments being made about Simpana's solutions around the whole virtual server management, right? And look, the, it's, it's okay to have sports cars. Sports cars, sports cars are really good, but they're really, really good when you're going around in circles in a close track. When you take them on the road, there's nothing more than a sedan which has no leg room and high insurance costs, and you get pulled over all the time. So what we really are, what we want to be is, is a all-purpose heavy-duty kind of truck over there because it's great for work, right? You can go around and have a lot of fun in it. It's great for the kids, the child partitions, as somebody in the room likes to call them. Right? For, for child partitions over here. And then, obviously, you do all of the heavy lifting with it. And yes, sometimes you also bail out sports cars when they sputter and die. And if you want us to go around in circles and racetracks, we do that too. But the thinking here is, we all know this, an IT infrastructure, an IT organization, it's not a race track, it's more like an obstacle course. And what you really need to be doing this is this on a daily basis. Right? So while yes, it's all it's 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 all great to have those kind of analogies over there, but let's let's keep in mind the day-to-day -day activities. So it's not just the first time you get in get the software in, in place, it's the interactions you have with it on a daily basis daily basis. It's what you do with it and how much you make your data aware and live based on the infrastructure you have in the back end. That's really the key proposition there. Now, we've been called many things, expensive, complex, lacking capabilities, and so on and so forth. So while we go through this conversation over here, uh, let's see if we can kind of address some of those things directly over there, right? 
So first of all, just to kind of go uh, touch base on this, we were the, the reason anytime we went into an account for, for a sale or something like that, it was always a replacement for us, right? So in the backup infrastructure, traditionally, it's always replaced. There is nobody in the, in the data center out there who doesn't have any backup solution, right? So we've always been doing this, go in, you know, replace an existing vendor. And the reason we've been doing, being able to do this is because of the value prop and the continuous ongoing innovation that our engineering folks are always constantly driving in the back over there. Right, here's an example, here are a few examples. So we were the first ones to actually write to native disk format. We were the first ones to do single pass restore from disk or tape, which means I'm not simulating my disk device in the back end as a virtual tape device with all those you know, sequential write access. We actually write to disk in native disk format, random access, IO, and so on and so forth. Sounds like a no-brainer, right? But until four years ago, many people were still simulating disk devices as tapes. There's a reason why the VTL, and VTL industry took off so well in the few years, a few years ago, because most people, most, most solutions out there still could not write to native disk format in a nice shareable form over there. We were one of the first vendors to introduce software-based deduplication, and we were the ones, we were the first ones to do both source-side and target-side deduplication embedded in the same software over there, right? When we introduce deduplication, it's not just about storage savings for us, it's also about the ability to do efficient van accelerated replication off to the other side over there as well. So it's not just about capturing data very efficiently from the front to the back, it's also how do I keep all of those DR copies in a very consistent manner, in a, in a, in a, create those DR copies very fast and effectively without too much impact on the networks. We'll talk about synthetic, uh, optimized synthetic full, but it's basically the notion of creating an artificial full uh, on a dedupe aware storage without actually doing a lot of data movement from the front to the back. And there's a whole slew of cloud innovations too. We were the first ones to support a wide variety of storage, cloud storage devices as a backup target. Not just a backup target, but an archive target as well. We are also one of the first ones, or probably the only ones even today, to provide both encryption and deduplication to cloud storage devices. The two things that, that uh, most people are worried about storage devices is what? One is, if I put too much data in it, my ongoing expenses are gonna go up too much, so that's deduplication takes care of that. The other thing they're worried about is security. If I put the data out there, how do I know it's secure, it's safe, it's, it's, you know, it's not accessible by anybody else? What you do there is you encrypt it before it ever hits the wire and stores it encrypted. You keep the keys in your, in your data center, only the encrypted data stays out in the cloud, and by the way, it's deduplicated too, so you're not paying the penalty for inflation. As Phil was talking about, uh, one of the key modern data protection stories that, that we've been kind of uh, articulating for the last three to four years is this ability to drive very fast recovery point objectives in an application consistent manner using lever leveraging hardware snapshots that are built into the storage arrays. So it's not just going in there blindly under the covers and doing a volume level snapshot at the bits and block at the bits and bytes levels or at the block level without any context to what application is sitting on the front there. So the whole ability to quiesce applications, get a consistent point in time, grab a point in time snapshot on the hardware level, and then be able to grab, um, mount that snapshot and move it off to a tier two or tier three storage. We did that for about three years ago. Supported across a wide variety of storage arrays out there, uh, pretty much most of the major ones, and that list is continuing to grow as we speak. And lastly, on the VM innovation side, uh, I know this seems a long time ago, we'd probably, we were probably the first ones to support VSA pro uh, protection for virtual machines using VCB, back when it wasn't even called VCB. Uh, it was called a sync driver for something. Um, we do support multiple platforms, so most of what we're going to talk about applies both to <coughs> VMware and Hyper-V. On Hyper-V, are you you're using the VSS writer? Yes. In CSVs? Yes. CSVs, VSS, and pretty soon SMB3 as well. Uh, again, using the, using the modern data protection techniques with IntelliSnap, you basically have, we have showcase environments where we've actually done hundreds of VMs in literally minutes from a data protection perspective, right? And uh, something we're gonna talk about soon is the last year or so, we are the, we are the first vendor, or probably the only vendor so far that I know of that can actually take the intelligence accumulated when I'm protecting those VMs to make smarter decisions on the back end, like when to retire those VMs out, based on usage profile and load and everything else on those VMs there. 
and we'll talk about that in a second there. So a slew of innovations that's, that's been happening over the years and it continues to happen on that side there as well. We'll come to those in a second. Right, so when we look at a virtual server environment, we are not just looking at, from a Simpano perspective, we are not just looking at it from a data protection or a backup perspective. Yes, backup is one of the core things we do, but because, as we said before, we collect a lot of information, it allows us to do a lot more things. And then when you factor in the platform and the engine that we've built on top of that, it exposes a lot of use cases for us. So sure, we'll talk about end-to-end -end data protection using agentless uh, software over there, but then there's a huge opportunity for us to also take advantage of some of the hybrid clouds that are, that are popping up all over the place, either based on VMware or uh, Hyper-V and, and pretty soon on Azure and EC2 as well, right? And then this last thing over here is once I've collected information about the, about the framework or the infrastructure itself, there's a lot we can offer from managing that infrastructure itself, not just protecting the VMs in there, but making smart decisions based on the observations and the workloads we see that's occurring on the management there. Right. So basically the technical presentation over here is kind of broken out into this segments over here. Now I'm going to use the slides more as a frame of reference. Feel free to, uh, as a, and obviously I don't have to say this to the room, but you know, pop in questions over there and we'll see where the conversation goes. We'll whiteboard it out or whatever. But use the slides just as a frame of reference. We don't have to go through all of them at this time. You guys cover as far as like sources, physical, virtual, Hyper-V, VMware, any other uh, any other hypervisors that you ha yes. do or will support? So Citrix, we do support oh, Citrix right, those today. Guys. Sorry, I keep forgetting. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, yes, there's uh, the framework itself is pretty flexible. When we get to the embargo thing, we'll look at some other plans. But majority of our customers today are doing VMware. Significant portion are actually adopting us for Hyper-V, and not just small departmental ITs, but significantly large environments out there, especially with uh, with 2012 R2 and CSVs becoming that, main street. Is that because you have an alliance with uh, Azure? Well, part of it is that. Part of it is just the, it's just the, we, we are very uh, closely aligned with Microsoft in any case, starting from micro application protection to, to a whole bunch of other things over there. So Hyper-V, because we were one of the first vendors to support Hyper-V, there's huge support from Microsoft side on that. So we've got access to APIs earlier earlier than most other people and so on and so forth. It's just one of those things where we're seeing the market going that way as well. And Because they sell their own backup product, you know, DPM. Yes. <laughs> and, and again, it goes back to, you know, uh, uh, you know, a small screwdriver versus, you know, a power tool kind of a thing. Do you have any of the limitations in the Microsoft space around RFS or in like storage spaces and stuff where it's been virtualized below the traditional storage layer? Yeah, so storage spaces right now, the nice thing about the new APIs is it kind of translates out the storage spaces anyways. So there are some advantages we provide from an infrastructure perspective. So we can take advantage of storage spaces to kind of make sure our software goes in an infrastructure without using too many servers and so on and so forth. For example, I can sit on the storage node themselves and operate from there. So there is some techniques there, but the APIs kind of mask that storage spaces over there. Same thing with REFS, the APIs are available, so you kind of poke into the R APIs and pull it that way. Okay. So we haven't seen any issues around REFS so far. Okay. Could you, maybe this is crazy, but could you uh, back up on-prem and restore to Azure using your software? Uh, yes, so today it's a manual process, but let's hold on to that thought for the end of the session there too, but yes, Good thoughts.